Well, good day! So, in today's video, we will continue with the Halloween shenanigans, and we will talk about that time that the Super Friends threw hands with Dr. Frankenstein and his creations. So, alright, let's go! Yeah! So, we start off in a major thunderstorm in Transylvania. Man, this seems like the perfect setting for a mad scientist to bring a giant corpse to life. <laughs> oh wait, what? That's exactly what's happening? Ay ay ay! The great great grandson of Dr. Victor Frankenstein is continuing his great great grandfather's work of bringing a giant beast from the dead back to life with the help of his assistant, Gork. Following his ancestor's recipe to the letter, the experiment is a success! The new creature is alive! And the new younger Dr. Frankenstein sends this monster loose on the streets in the nearby city to attack the descendants of those who dared ruin the name Frankenstein. By raiding their castle with pitchforks and torches all those centuries ago. Um, yeah, ha <laughs> ha. You know, just saying there, Doc. I think your great-great-grandfather accidentally did that to the family name, you know, himself. And I kind of think that you're making things worse for your family name by doing this now. Just saying, man. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, with this new creature terrorizing the entire city, the Super Friends are called to help! Which, you know, to me seems kind of odd because you would think that, you know, with modern day police forces or even perhaps, you know, the modern day armies, they might have sufficient weapons to stop such a beast, you know, terrorizing the place, right? Or, you know, I'm completely wrong and they're just using archaic weapons from, you know, the 17th century. What do I know, huh? So to help those villagers who are living in a city, Batman and Robin fly on down to check Transylvania out! So as the dynamic duo are trying to fight the creature in the streets, Dr. Frankenstein uses his monster remote control to send the beast back to his castle, and at the same time, to lure Batman and Robin into his lair to set them into a trap. But in the Doctor's lair, Batman and Robin indeed defeat the creature, knocking him out or unaliving the undead creature or something like that. Either way, man, this thing is out cold. So the day is saved, right? Hooray! Uh, no, no, the day is just getting worse. Dr. Frankenstein and Gord trapped our heroes and want to turn them into monsters that they can remote control. Which totally sucks! Because Batman is having his mind and strength transferred into a brainless monster body. Holy, I don't even know what to say, Batman. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, Robin is able to break out of his prison cell with the help of a friendly rat, where he knows he's kind of screwed by himself, so he sends an emergency distress call to Superman and Wonder Woman at the Hall of Justice, giving them the whole 411 on the situation. So Clark and Diana take off to Transylvania, and Gleek, you know who they were babysitting, follows them on his own accord in his cheaply made little airplane. In Transylvania, Superman and Wonder Woman are trying to stop a sludge monster from terrorizing the villagers, which is, you know, actually infinitely worse than a Frankenstein monster attacking the villagers. This thing is slimy and gross, it has a number of tentacles that can do a lot of, you know, damage and grabbing and all that kind of stuff, and this thing easily captures our two heroes. For it to capture Superman, you know, sure, the monster has kryptonite in it, so that's kind of easy, but this thing easily captures Wonder Woman too. Kryptonite don't affect her none, and she's freaking super strong, so like, why can't she fight this beast or even just get away from it? Boggles the mind, my friends. And with that, sadly, they are brought back to Dr. Frankenstein's castle as prisoners, where they see Batman basically being comatose and defeated, you know, lying on a slab next to them, which would absolutely mess with your mind, man, seeing one of your, like, most powerful compatriots down and out. Hi! 
But even worse than that is the doctor transfers Superman and Wonder Woman's essences into this mindless monster as well, where we see Dr. Frankenstein's greatest creation, the Super Bat Wonder Monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is so corny, but I love it! So with this monster on the loose that is controlled by Dr. Frankenstein, it is now up to Robin and Gleek to save the day! <laughs> Holy Mission Impossible, Batman! But these two super friends go down to the dungeon to break out their super friends for help. But, you know, what can these super friends do now, right? That machine has basically zapped Batman of his intelligence, his detective kung fu mind, you know. It's completely sapped Superman of his strength and powers, and it's taking Wonder Woman's lasso and bracelets. Which, that's all they've taken from Wonder Woman? Not her powers and stuff? She had powers bestowed by the gods upon her, like, did they not take that from her as well? Huh, well that's kind of awkward if she still has her powers. But still, you know, realistically, the three of them are completely powerless. So, the super friends go to the Austrian Energy Research Institute to get some help. They can transfer the energy from the three drained super friends into Robin. He now becomes Super Robin! What? Like, how? Like, what remaining powers anyway? I thought all of their powers were drained into that monster from Dr. Frankenstein? Am I missing something here? Well, regardless anyway, this transfer is only good for one hour. And if the powers are not transferred back to their host bodies, the three super friends will perish. So now it's Super Robin versus Super Monster. But seeing as their powers are equally matched and this fight is turning into a stalemate, Super Robin needs to go to Plan B. Seeing as the monster does have Superman's powers, he also has Superman's weaknesses. Robin dresses in a lead suit and exposes the super monster to this kryptonite, rendering it completely powerless. Super Robin returns the weakened monster to Dr. Frankenstein's lair in the laboratory where the rest of the super friends are waiting. They're just waiting at the castle? Sure, you know, it shows them being all kind of weak and kind of out of it, but Really, how are they still alive? They've had all of their strengths drained from them twice! Holy crap, hey, the sheer will to live from these guys is actually really impressive. So, with no time to spare, Super Robin traps Dr. Frankenstein and Gork, gets the super friends all on this machine apparatus with the super monster, sets the machine up for reverse power transfer, and boom! The Super Wonder Bat Monster is no more! And the Super Friends are back to their old selves! So the threat is gone, Dr. Frankenstein and Gore are in jail, and the day is officially saved! Hooray! And the best part is that Gleek is lost overseas, you know, in his little plane, so we might not be seeing him for a while. So double hooray! And with that, that is the end of this Sira Monster Tale! <laughs> yes! Man, you know what? Like, that was a pretty awesome episode! Not gonna lie! And really, like, what's not to like about it? You got Frankenstein, you got the Super Friends, and you got some crazy contraption monster! <laughs> you know, like, holy crap, how did they come up with that? This episode does have a bit of really interesting and kind of odd things going on in it. Well, you know... Obviously, but still, I'll talk about it. So this modern day Dr. Frankenstein is creating a monster to just get revenge on people for his family's name being ruined. Even though his family ruined his family name a long time ago, my question is, why not do something positive, you know, for the family name and try to, like, change it in a good way? You don't really gotta lean into the jerky mad scientist vibe there, you know? You could plant a nice little flower garden in the city square or something. Or, you know, if you're a doctor, maybe just, you know, be a town doctor and, like, help the people that way. Or no, you know, because building monsters is so damn fun. But, you know, if this episode is kind of in line with all those Frankenstein movies, you know, it's in of itself a pretty good sequel. You had, essentially, the original Frankenstein creature. 
It did its thing and it got defeated. So like with any technology, you know, you need to upgrade. Which is what the doctor did with this crazy super monster. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man, I almost fell out of my chair when I first seen that thing. I was not expecting that. But what a horribly dangerous monster, you know? That's gotta be every superhero's worst nightmare, man, having your powers fight against you. And speaking of that, you know, like, I gotta feel a little bad for Robin in this episode. So he gets captured along with Batman, and Dr. Frankenstein decides to use Batman's brain and intelligence for this new monster. But he also decides not to use Robin's brain and intelligence for this monster. Can't help but feel a little left out, you know? You can't sap my intelligence from me, Dr. Frankenstein! I won't let you! Oh, yeah, no, we weren't gonna use your brain power, kid. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Poor guy, you know? Even after watching Superman and Wonder Woman get their powers sapped away, Robin can't help but feel a little left out. Also, now that I think about it, you know, there was that other monster that Dr. Frankenstein had. That oily sludge octopus monster. That thing was actually pretty impressive. So, like, what happened to this monster then? Why wasn't this monster trying to save Dr. Frankenstein, you know, after the super monster was defeated? Why wasn't it around? Like, was it fired or something? It would have been pretty helpful for Dr. Frankenstein, but, you know, I guess it worked out pretty good for the super friends. But yes, yes, man, you know, like I say, this was a pretty awesome episode, and for a Halloween-type episode, man, doubly awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, you know, I suggest you do so. But, uh, you know, with all that stuff, we do have some more things to talk about behind the scenes about, you know, Frankenstein and the Super Friends and uh, this and that, you know, so let's go check that stuff out over here. So yes, yes, hey, Frankenstein and his monster. So how does the Frankenstein realm from this featured episode compare to the original Frankenstein realm? Let us use our detective eyes and find out. So, as we all know, Frankenstein and his monster and all that stuff first appeared in Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, which was first published in 1818 and was written by Mary Shelley. An absolute instant classic, which had a couple of re-releases with some slight alterations to the story. With the success of that book, of course, came the theater. There were three separate plays based on the book, which completely changed the story, like, way further. Not exactly unrecognizable, but quite a bit different from the book. The third play, being very successful, was eventually turned into a movie at Universal Pictures, with that classic, Frankenstein, which debuted in 1931. This movie is kind of the basis of how Frankenstein and his monster are perceived by pretty much everybody these days. And that is also what this featured episode is kind of based on. And with that, you know, like this featured episode actually did a really good job of kind of being in the same light of those original Frankenstein movies. For example, the manner in which Dr. Frankenstein brought his creature to life. Very similar as you've first seen in that Frankenstein movie, placing it on an apparatus, hoisting it in the air to get struck by lightning, having all of your, basically, computers kind of doing a lot of the work behind the scenes, and bada bing bada boom, you have a living undead creature! Also in this episode, you had a descendant of the original Dr. Victor Frankenstein, basically maintaining or looking after the original creature. So in the Frankenstein movie and its first sequel, The Bride of Frankenstein, in 1935, it was Victor Frankenstein who was the caretaker of the creatures. In the third movie, The Son of Frankenstein, in 1939, it was Victor's son, Baron Wolf von Frankenstein, who tried to help the creature out. And in the fourth movie, The Ghost of Frankenstein, in 1942, it was Victor's other son, Ludwig von Frankenstein, who tried to help this beast out. And, well, I guess it's not canon, but of course, in Young Frankenstein, it was Dr. Frederick Frankenstein who made his own monster. <laughs> 
So, for this featured episode to feature the great-great-grandson of Victor Frankenstein, <laughs> you know what? It fits really well with that original Frankenstein universe. So, with this younger Dr. Frankenstein creating that brain transferal into another monster body, that seems wild and wacky, but that was something that basically happened in the older Frankenstein movies, specifically in The Ghost of Frankenstein. When the creature underwent a brain transplant, and Igor's brain was transferred into the monster. <laughs> Which, like I say, man, sounds cheesy, but oh man, that, oh, that was actually an awesome movie, man. I really did love that. So, actually, pretty good homage to the original movies, so good on you, Super Friends. This episode was not the first time that the Super Friends had to battle some monsters, specifically the monsters from the famous Universal Studios Monsterverse. They fought against The Mummy in a Season 2 episode called The Mummy of Nazca, and they also fought against Dracula in the Season 3 episode Attack of the Vampire. So for the Super Friends either fighting against monsters or being turned into monsters, as happened in this featured episode, yeah, you did see some of that stuff happening in the comic books. So the Frankenstein creature does appear in DC Comics and is a character that you do see once in a while. He made his DC Comics debut in Detective Comics number 135 in 1948, which was more based on the original novel version of Frankenstein, where he was revived from being frozen in the Arctic. He has since appeared in a number of different variations throughout DC Comics history. You know, a classic character that is always around in some capacity, so as a Frankenstein fan, you know, I love it. Also, the whole concept of the Super Bat Wonder Monster, <laughs> Seems kind of ridiculous, but you know, eventually this was stuff that we did see in DC Comics. Well, mostly in the Elseworlds print. You know, the alternate reality one-shot stories? For example, Batman was turned into a vampire and fought against Dracula in Batman and Dracula Red Rain, which was published in 1992. Where, you know, kind of sucks, but... Bruce Wayne was, you know, basically dead, or I guess undead, as a vampire. But in a dark way, it kind of worked out because that means that Batman can live forever in the nights fighting crime as a vampire. Ooh. Also, we had the Superman monster, which was published in 1999 which was a pretty awesome amalgamation of the original Frankenstein novel with the original Superman origin. In this one, Dr. Victor Luther found a dead alien infant in a small rocket and brought it back to life as his own monster creation. Well, as an adult, I guess, not as an infant. But still, Super Frankenstein, ooh. So this episode, as odd as it may seem, you know, is actually pretty awesome to its original Frankenstein mythos and to, you know, a lot of DC Comics stories. But, you know, other than that, that's kind of the basics I have, you know, for Super Friends and Frankenstein and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure there were a lot more DC comic monster stories, but, you know, these are kind of the basic ones that we kind of got to for this, so it's all good. But yes, yes, with this, that, those, and the other things, I guess, uh, uh, that's that. Also, if you're interested, I created my own comic book channel, 215 Comics. And currently, I have created my own cartoon series, The Adventures of the Density, and recently started a radio series featuring my newest character, Elastoma with more titles to come. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link up top here to that channel and some links at the end of the video. Yay! Right on and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.